Well, I just want to first of all welcome uh, everyone here tonight. Thank you very much for, for coming. I see that you know, we found a place and we found a place to park. And, um, soon, hopefully, we'll be using the front doors uh, very soon. I'm, I have a few words that I want to say about the work generally, and then I'm going to um, talk specifically about some individual works, and then we'll uh, take a few questions at the end. A bit of background on the artwork, in my own words. I find it fascinating how um, humankind has developed the art of communication, especially the written language. Since the dawn of civilization, when you think back to the caveman, how we as human beings have communicated, uh, you know, first with sounds and, and then eventually with the written, written word. So I find it fascinating to see how far we've come uh, from the simple clay tablets, the cuneiform Sumerian clay tablets, to our present day tablets. Do you have your tablet with you? Oh, yes. You have your tablet. You know, going from, from these to those is really quite remarkable when you think about it. And, and so the, the idea of language and the written language is fascinating to me for some time. While I was in university, I, I came across a book um, called The Art of Written Forms. And it was a history of the alphabet and the history of the written language from ancient times to the present day. And in that book, there was a, a quote which had quite an impact on me. And that quote was that writing is experienced visually. <coughs> Now that sounds very obvious, uh, and that's true, but it's something we don't usually think of. Writing is a very visual thing. Even the word alphabet uh, in Hebrew, the first two letters uh, of the alphabet are aleph and bet, aleph bet, alphabet. And in Greek, of course, it's alpha and bet, alphabet. And, uh, Alpha means ox, or ox head, and bet is a house. <clears throat> so this uh, impact on me when I was in university uh, of the idea of looking at writing in a visual way, I decided that in 1971 I would put together a, a booklet to try to explain my, my interest in integrating words and writing into my drawing. The early works were largely abstract. They were just letters, words, and lots of writing, you know, without any images, uh, no faces. The tones, the lines, the textures, which the writing of the words created, they were the image. Uh, I have a sample, and, and after this, the talk, you can look through. There's a couple of extra books here if you want to have a look through. But this is the, the book I put together. Um, at that time, the alphabet's on the cover. And uh, actually, the introduction reads uh, Lines are long, lines are thin, lines go out and lines go in. Lines are happy, lines are sad, lines are funny, lines get mad. But always one finds that lines are lines and no one minds. <laughs> uh, actually, what, what I'm saying there is that. Visually, in art, lines have uh, different expressions, different emotions. Uh, you know, lines can be long and thin and fat and heavy and thin, and they express different uh, emotions by being that way. So either in abstract work or in, or in realistic work, lines are expressive. And, and that's kind of what I'm saying in that little poem. Um, so what the book does in, in some way is starts off with one letter, the letter O. And then it goes to one word, and then it goes to one line, and then that goes to one uh, paragraph. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Uh, one paragraph, and in this case, what I've done is I've filled in some of the spaces. I mean, letters, writing is really just a combination of line and space, which is out of the letter O. It's just a line that circles around itself and creates a space. So I start playing with the spaces inside the letters, filling them in. 
and then going from a uh, paragraph to a page of writing and exaggerating some of the, the letters from my own handwriting. Eventually, uh, where the page itself takes on a visual quality and the words are beginning to be lost and the page is taking on a visual, visual quality. Um, and then I did the same thing in the book. It, it does it with printing as well. And then the faces, you know, the early faces uh, start coming in for the picture. Um, but before the faces, there was uh, just abstract textures. We would take in the letters. Here we have each letter put together creates different textures. The letter H creates this texture, the letter M like waves, the letter U almost like scales. Uh, but just kind of playing with, with the textures that letters make and uh, using the printed word, which gives a slightly different look. Uh, and you can see in some of these works, most of them are written, and some are printed. Uh, like the the uh, painting in the back there, the very back, the colors, uh, it's a printed word. Um, the painting over by Bernie to the left is part of uh, printed, printed word. Uh, this one here beside me, uh, the dental, it's all printed words. Uh, so it gives a, a little different effect. And uh, when it's even horizontal, it, you sort of start to imagine that it may be a uh, landscape. Uh, but it's still just, just word. There's no image in there. So the early abstracts were like that. Um, this calligraphic drawing, as I called it, um, was not the only kind of drawing I was doing at the time. All along in my work, I was also drawing from observation and from my imagination. Um, or maybe I was imagining that I was drawing an observation, <laughs> or observing that I was drawing an engineer. Anyway, um, what what really intrigued me in my drawings, in my sketchbooks, and my paintings uh, were, were uh, the human head that started appearing quite frequently in my work, and uh, I always found that. Uh, felt strong about the human head because the, the human face is such a powerful vehicle for expression. After all, uh, what could be more basic, what could be more common than the human head? I mean, we all have one. <laughs> Did it appear subconsciously What was that? Did it appear subconsciously in your mind? No, I think I, it was, well, it might have started subconsciously, but it, I became conscious of it. And, yeah. yeah. So uh, the face began to appear in the drawings more and more frequently after that. And my attempt in, in doing the faces in the drawings was to reach a harmony of form and content. And the form being the technique, the writing, the word, while the content is the subject, the face. And I try to do that in all my painting, whether it's very realistic or it's calligraphy or it's abstract, is to balance the sense of form and content. If the writing uh, in places is legible, that just adds another layer, of, a literary layer of content. And although the writing may be more prominent at the beginning of the process, in the end, it's the image that, that dominates. And as you look around, you can see certain works have different degrees of legibility. Some they have a few words you can make out, and some may have quite a few. You could actually read sentences or, or more, and others not. So it varies. With most of the drawings, um, the words are just a stream of consciousness. Um, sometimes I'm writing descriptively about what I'm writing, about my drawing talking about the drawing or how it's going or how it's not going or the pen's, the pen's skipping or I've got to refill my pen. Or, and other times I'm, I'm talking about the noise outside the studio window or the distraction and voices outside the door or the phone ringing. Or, and then other times I'm talking about uh, more expressive things or a little more poetic things. So it just varies. 
<clears throat> when it comes to uh, specific personalities, like Einstein or uh, Vincent van Gogh, uh, Mona Lisa in the far corner, uh, the little one is in Mona Lisa in the far corner. Then the words are actually relate to the figure, to the face in the painting. And in, in many cases, the words are the words of the figures in the paintings, either taken from their um, memoirs or from biographers who are writing about them. Otherwise, the words are not my own words. <clears throat> now, that I've been asked too about the titles of the works. Um, the titles of the works, 99% of the time, come from either the first line of the drawing or the last line of the drawing. Um, and then that relates. So it doesn't necessarily relate to the image of the face in the work, it relates more to the writing of the work, the title. The, uh, this exhibition covers a, a period of more than 40 years. And coincidentally, there are just over 40 works in the show. And uh, although I've been producing these written drawings since 1970, off and on, uh, it's been 30 years since I've had a show which was entirely a calligraphic work. And actually, there's a drawing just on the wall behind Bernie, where Bernie's standing. Um, on the other side of the wall is number 26. And uh, the library. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no. so, so this work here uh, is actually from that first show, which was at the Ring Gallery in 1980. Um, it's the only one in this, in this show that's from that show. Thank you. Uh, my fear of, of putting together a show like this, which, which was thematic and, and very large in, in the number of works, was that um, the show might end up looking repetitious. You know, once you come in, once you've seen one, you've seen them all, sort of thing. So uh, I was concerned about that, but after putting the show together and seeing it uh, often as a show, I'm very happy uh, the way that the show looks. And um, I find it's a, an interesting show, and it's not at all repetitious, as I feared it might, might be. Um, also, I, I was glad to have the opportunity to be able to borrow works and um, see some of these works that I haven't seen myself for a number of years. So if, if you've had a look around, or if you do later, you may notice that there's a blue uh, dot on some of the pieces. And works in the other room are all blue dots. And the blue dots mean that the works are on loan. So they've been owned by someone and are owned for the show. Um, so basically, uh, the majority, there are maybe two in this room, the majority in the other room, all of them are loaned from either private collections or from institutions, uh, like the New Brunswick Museum or the Muriel Ferguson Foundation, um, or even the Art Center. And uh, I think that's, that's about it. The red dots in this room, of course, mean that the, the works are sold. So they're sort of on long too now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, OK, so I'm going to read a few lines from, from several of the drawings. And then uh, we'll take some questions from the floor, <clears throat> or the wall, or the ceiling, whatever, wherever they come from. Um, before I do that, I just want to share with you some breaking news. I, I guess um, there's a, with a theft in St. Andrews, there's a, an RCMP newsletter there was handed. And apparently one of my paintings uh, has been stolen, um, along with some other things from the home in St. Andrews, unfortunately. Uh, and it was a painting called Imagine Angels, a four foot by three foot painting. So a little smaller than this, this work, and it was an angel's face uh, in calligraphy. And uh, we were going to borrow it for the show, actually. And then, because uh, I was um, ill before the show, we weren't even sure that if we were going to have the show start when it was going to. So we, when I uh, recovered, we decided to go ahead with the show, and we were a little behind. So we decided not to borrow it too far away at St. Andrews. 
Um, so we didn't, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, apparently, that's going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to start with this with this angel. This angel is actually a reproduction. Uh, it's the only reproduction in the show. All the others are original. And uh, you have to excuse my back at times when I when I read from from the works. Uh, Let's see. So I'll just pick a few lines uh, here and there from them. Uh, uh, can't even read my own writing sometimes. But don't don't lose sight of the bigger picture, assuming there is a bigger picture. And if there is a bigger picture, then who holds the remote control? <laughs> Looking for the traffic signs in the highway of my mind, without a map, I'm blind. I try to stay between the lines. That's what I'm doing here. I color my way through life. I try to stay inside the lines. I respect my margin, my edge, the border, the boundary, the brim, the fringe, the brink, the limit, the borderline, the final frontier. And then I have uh, written a homage to Leonardo, and I've written it backwards, so you have to read it in the mirror. Wow. And the reason I did that was because that's what Leonardo da Vinci did with all his journals and notes. He wrote them backwards in the mirror so no one could read them. So, so this is kind of a homage to Leonardo da Vinci. And the reason, uh, because the angel face is Leonardo da Vinci's angel from the Virgin of the Rocks. And uh, so I, I uh, did the study from his drawing, and that's where the angel face came from. So that's why this drawing is a homage to Leonardo. And then also I thank my guardian angel. Um, number two, in the presence of the past, uh, it's kind of the image here is uh, based on a kind of uh, old Greek marble statue, as that ancient uh, antique uh, look. Feathers in the air, bones in the ground, fighting, in the, fighting to distribute the health. Thoughts heavenly bound, take a good look at the light, take a good listen to the sound. Everything is quiet, everything so still, as if nature has lost her breath and I've lost my will. In the presence of the past, the future shall be last. Um, this work, last, uh, was it last spring was the original, the St. John Originals, uh, the awards. <clears throat> so I was nominated to, uh, as a, as a uh, Tested in the visual arts, uh, which I won. Um, but what they asked was for a biography, a bio, uh, to send in. And they asked, it's got to be less than four, 40 words, not more than 40 words, or else they won't read the, beyond 40 words. So I just counted from 1 to 40 and the image of my face <laughs> and, and sent it in. So that, that's my bio. <laughs> so, and I call it. Herzl sketch Etsky. <laughs> uh, two hours later, this is called. This is actually kind of a self portrait with my eyes closed. <laughs> uh, my glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actually, it was written in the hospital. I was in the IV day hospital getting IV, so I was sitting and doing some writing. Uh, it's on a piece of mat board, so, which is easy to carry around. It's stiff, so you can sort of do it when you're waiting in the doctor's office. Or whatever. So that's where this started. And then finished it at the studio. Um, so, bottom line, uh, I expect to be running out of ink soon and we'll need to refill. It, it was frustrating when the pen would start skipping or I'd, I'd run out of ink. Uh, for the sake of a thought, time to refill my pen with thoughts. 
back in the studio. Number 10, let's say uh, Einstein. So this, uh, I could probably do it. Excuse my back. And this one started off, uh, okay, put it on here. So, of course, this one is not my, my writing. Some of it was my writing when I started because I wasn't sure what face I was going to do, but when I decided to do uh, it was going to be Einstein, then I went to a, a book I had on Einstein and used uh, the biographer words from, from the book. So some of the words are Einstein, some of the biographers. Um, so I'll just read you a clip here from Uh, his stepdaughter Margot, also in the same, this is about his last uh, few moments in the hospital before he died. In the same hospital at the time said, I did not recognize him at first so changed. He was by the pain and so pale, but his manner was the same. He joked and faced his own state with complete superiority. He spoke with, he spoke with perfect calm even with slight humor about the doctors, and was waiting for his end, as if for an expected natural phenomenon. Peacefully, just after midnight, with a change in his breathing, the nurse cranked up the head of his bed. He was muttering his final words in German. The nurse never spoke German, so we don't know what his last words were. He was born in, in Germany, of course. Uh, transcendental. This is the one I printed. What, what I do when I print them is uh, Sometimes I space the words far apart, so it can be hard to read because the letters get stretched out. Mm -hmm. Or I crowd them together, and they're hard to read because they're fun, so you don't know where one word starts and one word ends. Uh, so it's fun to wear. Just want to leave something behind, like a part of my heart. For a piece of my mind. Today's the eve of make believe. Don't be deceived by reality. It's only a melody, a beautiful melody on a temporal instrument. This drawing is my window. This ink is my junction. This is where everything intersects my life, my art. This is my function. A line defines two sides, always on the border of chaos and order. My body is the brick, my spirit is the mortar. Uh, this, this painting here, if, if you had a chance to, to notice, <coughs> sign uh, on the left here, you have to be a sign on the right here. That's what, no, just kidding. <laughs> sign on the right, Kishetsky, 1970, and it's signed here on the left, 2012. So it took me 40 years to do. I started it back in 1970, and as I was mentioning in the booklet, when some of my early work was just words and writing, that's what that was at that stage. It was no image of a face. It was just all, all writing. And this is on canvas, so it's done with, with paint, with brush, coated on canvas. So it sat in the studio for years, and it was covered up, and I moved from studio to studio over, over a period of years. And then when I decided to have this show, I decided that I wanted to put an image in it, and I wanted to put a face in it. So that was done. So this is the precious painting in the show. Um, 
So 40 years. Now, because it's got two signatures on it, it's twice as expensive as anything else. <laughs> Not really. It, it was like I say, it was in the studio for a long time, and it was just abstract. And I always kind of liked it at that stage. And then when I started, and at that time, in '70, I wasn't doing a lot of faces. I was doing, you know, some and a lot of abstract. So it was only recently I decided I don't have any large pieces in the show. I don't have any real paintings in the show except an early '71 in the other room, and this one behind uh, Herb, the uh, moon is on the on the cover of the catalog. And actually it's the same way. It started in 1971 or 72. It's signed twice. And then we just call it printing. No face. And then when this show came, I decided I wanted to put a face in it. And I just started, and I, I didn't know at the time what face would turn out. So as that came out, it came out as a kind of lunar face. I thought it was a moon face. So I emphasized that. And I'm kind of interested in astronomy. And so I call it the lunar face. This one, uh, I was looking through some uh, magazines, and contemporary magazines, and, and there were a couple of faces in the magazine that uh, I found interesting. So I kind of combined the two faces and used those as the model, sort of a fashion uh, uh, magazine, you know, glamour type. So I sort of combined two faces, and that's, that's what that, what, where that face came from. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but a lot of the faces are just from imagination and others are from either a magazine or, or a real person or a school daughter. Or, so there's kind of a mixture too of, of imagination and, and reality in the actual uh, images. This, this one here of Vincent van Gogh is based on a, a favorite self-portrait um, of his that, that I, I like. And it's, it's, again, very recent. It was done just uh, you know, this year. And it's a little unusual because I followed his brush strokes. So the words, instead of just coming across like most of the others do, actually kind of follow the, the movement of the brushwork uh, in the painting. The background uh, are all the titles to his paintings. And the face uh, are words from his letters to his brother Theo. And if you know anything about his life, his brother Theo supported him financially and uh, emotionally throughout his struggle of life. Um, so just to give you an example here, uh, I'll read the highlight on his forehead. We uh, a bond that is a bond, a bond that is after, and I hope we shall in spite of everything, continue to understand each other and let us not forget that we have known each other from childhood. I have known, I have known each other from childhood and that, and that thousand soft, that thousand or so other things can bring us more and more together. I am writing, I am awfully sorry that I am a burden. I'm, I'm awfully sorry I'm a burden to you. Perhaps things will clear up, but if the uh, situation is too much for you, tell me so plainly. I should rather give up everything and put to you a heavy burden on, uh, on your shoulders. If that's the case, I will go to work uh, at something else, be it carrying parcels or whatever. So he's, he's talking to his brother. His brother's having a hard time too. And he's realizing he's a burden on his brother and writing and saying, you know, I might do something else. Um, if we could bring the 
In the beginning was the word, number 20, over to the easel, and I'll be the one from that one. And we'll put Einstein back on the wall. <coughs> The next one will be that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is from the Hospice Art Show and Sale in 1987. And, and I was asked to design the cover. So this was the cover to the, to the, uh, the show and sale. It was a fundraiser for Hospice. And uh, I think Carolyn Pillow was involved in that at the time. Uh, and I'm just going to read you a few names. I thought it was interesting. So what I did was in the sky, I uh, I used the catalog of all the artists who were in the show and, and put all the artists' names uh, in, in the show. Zen Akins, Henry, and uh, Barrett, mm. Muriel Bell, Bruno Boback, Molly Boback, Ray Butler, Sidney Butt, uh, Shelley Cameron, Bruce Campbell, Lindy Climo, Mary Cormier, Margot Cormier, Peter Davidson, uh, Marjorie Donaldson, Keith Eldridge, Joanne Fitzpatrick, William Forrestal, Tom Forrestal, Angel Gomez, Christopher Gorey. All these names should be familiar to you who are familiar with the art scene. Toby Grazer, Charlotte Hammond, <coughs> Suzanne Hill, Kathy Hooper, John Hooper, Bertrand Shetty. Not sure about him. <laughs> Car Carolyn Killam, uh, Suzanne Chrysler, Don McNuck, Claudia, Catherine McAvity, David Mackay, Mary Pratt, Christopher Pratt, Henry Purdy, Greg Ross, Kathy Ross, Jim Stackhouse, Charles Patel, Libby Shackleton, Pat Shell. All these uh, very familiar names. Interesting now looking back and seeing who else mm -hmm. And then the skyline, of course, of St. John's in the bottom. Is the skyline done in names as well? Is yeah. It? yeah. Well, I start repeating the names. In that case, so you see name repeated, especially if you're <laughs> <laughs> So after this one, we'll be an honor to do so. Uh, and this one is called, In the Beginning Was the Word, and the word was a void. Everything just out of reach. The cost of freedom has put me in debt. Throw the dice and see what you get. I've been here before. Actually, I've never left. Life is just a window to glimpse the other side. It's always changing despite what you do. It's always turning old, just, just when you thought it was new. There's no one to tell you what to say. There's no one to tell you what to do. Don't you recognize yourself? That seems long ago. Now it's history, gone from reality into mystery. They're all gone as well, some to heaven, some to hell. There's still time to choose. I've helped carry the bodies away. They never knew us, out of the sun and into the earth. Came to a place where two lines intersect. The lines were good, but I was wrecked. I'll leave you with this thought. Wait, no, not that one. Maybe this one. Ah, uh, no, we've already had that one. <laughs> what about, no, that's not worth completing. Well, so much for that. And I'm glad you mentioned it. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Gotta go, but don't know where. Turn the dock, click the button. <laughs> Uh, the modern Medusa. Again, this is kind of from a fashion magazine, the glamour idea, but kind of putting a twist on it, the idea of all the, the hair and thinking of the story of the Medusa, where if you look through her eyes straight, you were turned to stone. Um, so you're mesmerized by, by her. Um, so let's see. Hmm. Okay. 
Um, rain flakes and snowdrops are falling from the fearful clouds. The children lift me like nothing else can, as if by magic, as if by magic. Their laughter, their smiles radiate from them and wrap around me, as if I were weightless and carry me across the room like the figure in a Chagall painting, floating suspended. These children are not my own, those of my close friends and relatives. I don't know if the emptiness will ever be filled with the love of children. It seems ironic. That was before I was married and had my own children. <laughs> um, actually, this, this was a, an engagement gift to my wife. And this is my child. This is my youngest daughter. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is called Mysteries of the Mind. <clears throat> You're becoming more of a mystery as you get older. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe I've said too much. Maybe I haven't said enough. I'll be sentenced by these lines. I've tried not to go outside of the line. Who draws the line? And where would you draw the line? Hi, I'm not here right now. Well, I am actually, but I'm just not paying any attention to you. Nor am I interested in speaking to you or listening to you. I'd rather, I, I'm rather busy at the moment. I've realized too late that it's too late to realize, and it only gets worse. It's okay because I never remember what I've said or what I've read. Too much sugar, too much salt. Can't think of anything to say. Could be, I could say a prayer in praise of that which is not there. Or is it there in every heartbeat, in every hair, in every look? We read the book, we want to my birthday is in three days. I'm a year older than he was when he died. I still use the razor. He's talking about my father. I'll be a year older than he was when he died. I still use the razor he used to shave. And I'm surprised I can still find blades for it. Anyway, it goes on. Some of it gets lost, and I can't read often the whole uh, sentence. But that gives you an idea of the, the type of things that are written in, in the works which kind of add another layer of content as I said earlier to the, to the pieces. Um, there's, a, there's another work in the other room, uh, just one where I'll mention it, uh, called A Letter to the Artist. And it's uh, a letter that I received from the St. John Art Club. And uh, Bernie will hold it up and show it to you. It was when they were raising money, they called it the Bicapital Project. They were raising money for the Imperial Theatre Building, and it was owned at the time, it was called Bicapital. So they were raising money, and uh, it sent me a letter. Um, sure. And asked me to donate a work of art uh, to help raise money for the, the project. So I copied the letter and wrote. Uh, face into it and send it back and, and uh, so now it's part of the, the St. John Art Club collection and that collection is being kept uh, by the New Brunswick Museum. So the New Brunswick Museum loaned this work uh, for the show. Okay. Yeah. Whose face? Whose face is it? Oh, whose face? Imaginary. Yeah. yeah, as I say, some of the faces are imaginary, some are, are real. Um, Bob Dylan, Mischetsky, my daughter Tova, an ancient sculpture, totally imaginary, totally imaginary. They say from a uh, composite from a magazine, from a magazine. So these are, it would be a real person. And many of the others on the back are just imaginary. Uh, so, so that's it. If there's any questions, we'll, we'll take some uh, questions if you have. Uh,